the book of Enoch, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. We will be going over the mysteries behind the book of Enoch and why this book was removed from the scriptures. Now in the very beginning we are told that Enoch lived to be 365 years old and we are also told according to scripture that he walked with all and that all had taken him. Enoch is the great grandfather of Noah and is said that he has written well over 300 books with some sources citing up to 365 and there are also some Coptic, Ethiopian, and Slavic translations containing the books of Enoch with some containing up to three but for clarity's sake and for the sake of this video we will be focusing on and citing from the book of 1st Enoch. Now overall, the book of Enoch contains the visions of the world to come which he received from Yahuwah above, visions of Shamayim or what the world commonly knows as heaven, visions of Sheol or the world below, and it also includes concepts including the fallen ones, final judgment, the prophecy of the Messiah Yahusha and resurrection and redemption, the new reign on earth to come, and the book also discusses luminaries and how they work such as the movement of the sun, moon, and stars, calendrical systems including the Enoch calendar, and also geography, astronomy, and also meteorology, and the messengers or what's commonly known as the angels and their roles too and we'll be talking more about each of these subjects and going more in depth with this book to really uncover the truth and the mysteries behind it. Overall, the Book of Enoch is over a hundred chapters long and is divided into five subsections, each of these sections we're going to be talking about. Now the first 36 chapters is also known as the Book of the Watchers, and it talks about Enoch, or his Hebrew name, Yahudith name being Kanuk, how he's an upright man walking with all, Yahuwah Yahusha, who receives visions from above and foreshadows of the world to come. However, a majority of these chapters go into detail describing the rebellion of the fallen ones called the Watchers who co-mingled and had sexual intercourse with the women to ultimately give birth to their race of giants which are also known as the Nephilim or the Anunnaki, therefore establishing their wicked kingdoms and their wicked reigns on earth which explains many of today's oversized structures such as the pyramids and many others that are located worldwide. We even see Enoch being quoted in scripture itself in the book of Yahuda or what's commonly known as the book of Jude in verses 14 and 15 where it says, Hanuk, Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about them. See, Yahuwah is coming with thousands upon thousands of his righteous ones to judge everyone and to convict all of them of the wicked acts they have committed in their wickedness and of all the defiant words that transgressors have spoken against him. But where is Jude exactly quoting this from? He's quoting it from the book of Enoch itself. Enoch chapter 1 verse 9 and see, he comes with tens thousands of his Kadashim, or his righteous ones, to execute judgment upon all, and to destroy all the wicked, and to convict all flesh of all the works of their wickedness, which they have committed wickedly, and of all the harsh matters which wicked transgressors have spoken against him. Genesis chapter 6 and it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of all saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all, which they chose. And Yahuwah said, My Ruker spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of all came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. Enoch chapter 6, 7, 8, and 9. Chapter 6. And it came to be, when the children of men had multiplied, that in those days were born unto them good-looking and lovely daughters. And the messengers, 
The children from above saw and lusted after them and said to one another, Come, let us choose us wives from among the children of men and bring forth children. And Shamyatza, who was their leader, said unto them, I fear you will not indeed agree to do this deed, and I alone shall have to pay the penalty of a great transgression. And they all answered him and said, Let us all swear an oath, and all bind ourselves by mutual curses not to abandon this plan, but to do this matter. Then they all swear together and bound themselves by mutual curses upon it. And they were, in all, two hundred who descended in the days of Yerod on the summit of Mount Hermon. And they called it Mount Hermon, because they had sworn and bound themselves by mutual curses upon it. And these were the names of their leaders, Shamlatsats, their leader Araklaba, Ramaal, Kukabal, Tamlaal, Ramlaal, Danayal, Yakazakal, Barakyaal, Asaal, Armarus, Bataral, Ananal, Saklaal, Shamshapaal, Sataral, Surial, Yumyaal, Sarial. These are their chiefs of ten. Enoch chapter 7. And all the others together with them took unto themselves wives, and each chose one for himself, and they began to go in unto them and to defile themselves with them. And they taught them charms and enchantments, and the cutting of roots, and made them to know plants. And they became pregnant, and they brought forth great giants whose height was three thousand alls, who consumed all the acquisitions of men. And when men could no longer sustain them, the giants turned against them and devoured mankind. And they began to transgress against birds and beasts and reptiles and fish and to devour one another's flesh and drink the blood. Then the earth laid accusation against the lawless ones. Enoch chapter 8 And Azazel taught men to make swords and knives and shields and breastplates and make known to them the metals of the earth and the art of working them and bracelets and ornaments and the use of antimony and the adorning of the eyelids all kinds of costly stones and all coloring tinctures and there arose much wickedness and they committed whoring, and they were led astray, and became corrupt in all their ways. Shamyatsa taught enchantments and root cuttings. Armarus taught the resolving of enchantments. Barakayal taught astrology. Kubabal taught the constellations. Yakazakal the knowledge of the clouds. Arakayal, the signs of the earth, Shamsayal, the signs of the sun, and Sarayal, the course of the moon. And as men perished, they cried, and their cry went up to above. Enoch chapter 9 And then Mayakal, Uriyal, Raphael, and Gabaryal looked down from above and saw much blood being shed upon the earth and all lawlessness being wrought upon the earth. And they said one to another, The earth made without inhabitant cries the voice of their crying up to the gates of above. And now to you, the righteous of above, the beings of men make their petition, saying, Bring our cause before the Most High. And they said to Yahuwah of the ages, Sovereign of sovereigns, all of mighty ones, sovereign of sovereigns in all of the ages, the throne of your esteem is unto all the generations of the ages, and your name made a part in magnificent and Baruch unto all the ages. You have made all, and you have power over all, and all are naked and open in your sight, and you see all matters, and none can hide himself from you. You see what Azazel has done, who has taught all unrighteousness on earth and revealed the eternal secrets which were above, which men were striving to learn. And Shamyatsa, to whom you have given authority to bear rule over his associates, 
and they have gone to the daughters of men upon the earth and have slept with the women and have defiled themselves and revealed to them all kinds of iniquities the women have borne giants and by this the whole earth has been filled with blood and unrighteousness and now see the beings of those who have died are crying and making their petition to the gates of the shamayam the heavens above and their lamentations have ascended and cannot cease because of the lawless deeds which are wrought on the earth and you know all matters before they come to pass and you see these and you allow them and you do not say to us what we are to do to them in regard to these because of all the wickedness going on during that time that is when yahuwah decided to of course foreshadow and talk about the flood and the flood that would occur during the time of noah but we also know that we wrestle not against flesh and blood and Enoch chapter 15 also tells us the same thing in verses 8 through 11 where it says and now the giants who are produced from the spirits and flesh shall be called evil spirits upon the earth and on the earth shall be their dwelling evil spirits have proceeded from their bodies because they are born from men and from the Kadesh watchers is their beginning and primal origin they shall be evil spirits on earth, and evil spirits shall they be called. As for the spirits of above, in the Shamayam or heaven shall be their dwelling. But as for the spirits of the earth which were born upon the earth, on the earth shall be their dwelling. And the spirits of the giants afflict, oppress, destroy, attack, do battle, and work destruction on the earth, and cause trouble. They take no food, but nevertheless hunger and thirst and cause offenses. And these spirits shall rise up against the children of men and against the women because they have proceeded from them. But it's not all just demons and fallen ones and giants. The book of Enoch also talks about the righteous messengers too and their roles as well. And even Enoch chapter 14 gives us a vision of the throne above and how it actually looks. We also have Enoch chapter 20, which is the names of the Kadash righteous messengers whose jobs are to watch over the entire earth. Enoch chapter 20. And these are the names of the righteous messengers who watch. Uriel, one of the righteous messengers who is over the world and over Gehenna. Rapa'al, one of the Kadash righteous messengers who is over the spirits of men. Ragual, one of the messengers who takes vengeance on the world of the lights, Mayakal, one of the messengers in order that he is appointed over the best part of mankind and over disorder, Sarakaal, one of the righteous messengers who is appointed over the spirits who transgress in the spirit, Gabrayal, one of the righteous messengers who is over paradise and the serpents and the carubium, Ramaal, one of the righteous messengers whom Alua appointed over those who rise. The rest of this section pretty much gives a brief overview of the entire earth and how it looks. Chapter 21 describes the place and imprisonment of the fallen ones. Chapter 22 describes Sheol or the underworld. And then we also have, and we're going to skip to chapters 28 through 36, that also talk about Enoch's visions and journeys to the east north and south and also the ends of the world are also mentioned and noted in these chapters too section 2 of enoch is known as the book of parables in chapters 37 through 71 and is divided into three different parables the first one is described in chapters 37 through 44 the second one in chapters 45 through 57 and the third one in chapters 58 through 71 in this section, these chapters contain visions that Enoch had of above and earthly occurrences. This version also includes interpretations from the righteous messengers who are commonly known as the angels. But what's also very prevalent about this section is that the primary character here is the Son of Man, the Messiah, Yahusha, who's foreshadowed on the throne with other titles such as the Chosen One, Anointed One, righteous one and it's used for final judgment redemption retribution 
recompense and the vindication of the righteous that's described in these chapters. In Enoch chapter 46, we also see a vision that Enoch has describing the Ancient of Days, which is the exact same description that we find in the book of Danayal or Daniel chapter 7 verses 13 through 14, and even some of the same visions that are described by Yahukanan in Revelation chapter 1. Chapters 46 through 57 talk all about judgment, but then also in chapter 65, we have the foreshadowing of the flood, specifically in Enoch chapter 65, verses 9 through 12, which read, quote, And after that, my grandfather Kanuk took hold of me by my hand and raised me up and said unto me, Go, for I have asked Yahuwah of hosts regarding this commotion on the earth, and he said unto me, Because of their unrighteousness, their judgment has been determined upon, and shall not be withheld by me forever. Because of the sorceries which they have searched out and learned, the earth and those who dwell upon it shall be destroyed. And these, they have no place of repentance forever, because they have shown them what was hidden, and they are the condemned. But as for you, my son, Yahuwah of hosts knows that you are pure, and guiltless of this reproach concerning the secrets. And he has determined your name to be among the righteous, and will preserve you amongst those who dwell on the earth, and has preserved your righteous seed both for sovereignty and for great esteem, and from your seed shall proceed a fountain of the righteous, and the made apart, without number, forever. Section 3 of the Book of Enoch is contained in chapter 72 through 82, which is also known as the Astronomical Book, because these 11 chapters contain a summary, teaching, and explanation on how all of the luminaries work together and their different functions on the sun, moon, and stars. The Book of Enoch also talks about and explains how the sun, moon, and stars are actually moving, which also agrees with the account in Genesis chapter 1 and even Joshua chapter 10 verse 13, Joshua's long day, the sun standing still. And it even talks about things such as the firmament and even the depth and the pillars of the earth and what's there. We see that such an account is very reminiscent of that of a flat earth and such descriptions is only possible on the flat earth model and not the lies and deception of NASA because that's what NASA means in Hebrew. It means deception. It's time to wake up out of these deceptions indeed. The section of this book also contains a 364-day calendar, also known as the Enoch calendar, that's described in one year, with the 30-30-31 count calendrical system for months 1, 2, and 3, with months beginning at the spring, and so on, all the way up until around the 12th month. Such a calendar system also matches that of the calendars that's described and talked about in the Qumran fragments 4Q208 all the way up until 4Q211 and it's also described in the Book of Jubilees, primarily Jubilees chapter 6. And you can see on this calendar here you get 3030 and then 31 with the 31st day occurring on each of the solstices as you can see here corresponding with each of the four seasons of the year of course this is contrary to the babylonian influenced lunar calendar that's only 354 days in a year with an additional 13th month that has to be added extra per the metonic 19 year cycle but this calendar here actually agrees with what genesis 114 says where it talks about the signs and the luminaries being used for signs and seasons also of course, every passage in every book that they try to give us must be preceded with caution, but we'll quote a little bit from the book of Jubilees. We'll be quoting Jubilees chapter 6 verses 32 through 38, which also agree with this calendar because this has to do with the messenger speaking to Moses and commanding Moses of what to do for the children of Yasharal after the Exodus. Verse 32, 
And command thou the children of Yasharal that they observe the years according to this reckoning, 364 days, and these will constitute a complete year, and they will not disturb its time from its days and from its feasts, for everything will fall out in them according to their testimony, and they will not leave out any day nor disturb any feast. But if they do neglect and do not observe them according to his commandment, then they will disturb all their seasons, and the years will be dislodged from this. And they will disturb the seasons, and the years will be dislodged, and they will neglect their ordinances. Verse 34, And all the children of Yasharal will forget, and will not find the path of the years, and will forget the new months, and seasons, and Shabbats, and they will go wrong as to all the orders of the years. For I know, and from henceforth will I declare it unto thee, and it is not of my own devising, for the book written before me and on the heavenly tablets the division of days is ordained, lest they forget the feast of the covenant and walk according to the feast of the Gentiles after their error and after their ignorance. For there will be all those who will assuredly make observances on the moon, how it disturbs the seasons and comes in from year to year 10 days too soon. Verse 37, For this reason the years will come upon them when they will disturb the order and make an abominable day the day of testimony and an unclean day a feast day, and they will confound all the days, the Kadash with the unclean, and the unclean day with the Kadash or made apart, for they will go wrong as to the months and Sabbaths and feasts and jubilees. For this reason I command and testify to thee that thou mayest testify to them. For after thy death thy children will disturb them, so that they will not make the year 364 days only. And for this reason they will go wrong as to the new months and seasons and Sabbaths and festivals, and they will eat all kinds of blood with all kinds of flesh. And it's very interesting and suspicious indeed how this calendar has been hidden throughout history. Why is that the case? Could that be another reason that they hid this book? Interesting. But we also see that throughout this book specifically that Enoch is guided by the Ark Messenger Uriel throughout this. And it also talks about how the messengers are placed in charge by Yahuwah Yahusha to control the different weather patterns, weather movement, luminary movements, rain, snow, sleet, hail, etc. Which also explains why the fallen ones are trying to manipulate the weather and the seasons and to disturb them via harp, CERN, and other governmental organizations via weather modification, cloud seeding, and also the creation of things such as artificial sunlight, LED, and also fake snow because they think that they're their own mighty ones. Chapter 72 and 73 specifically go into detail talking about the movement of the sun and also talks about the six different portals wherein the sun travels throughout the entire year. Chapter 74 talks about the movement of the moon. Chapter 75 talks about the 12 winds. 76 talks about the portals for the wind. All the rest covers meteorology, geography, and also astronomical things and the luminaries and how they work in the calendrical systems. But now we'll be talking about and focusing more on the seasons and the messengers that are appointed per the seasons in the book of Enoch chapter 82 verses 12 through 20 specifically. Verse 12. And these heads over thousands are intercalated between leader and leader, each behind the station, but their leaders make the division. And these are the names of the leaders who divide the four parts of the year which are ordered. Malkyaal, Alamalak, Malakyal, and Naral. Verse 14, and the names of those who lead them, Ad Naral, and Yasusaal, and Alumal, these three follow the leaders of the orders, and there is one that follows the three leaders of the orders which follow those leaders of the stations that divide the four parts of the year. In the beginning of the year, Malakyal rises first and rules, who is named Tamaini and Shamash, and all the days of his dominion whilst he bears rule are ninety-one days. 
verse 16 and these are the signs of the days which are to be seen on earth in the days of his dominion sweat and heat and calms and all the trees bear fruit and leaves are produced on all the trees and the harvest of wheat and the rose flowers and all the flowers which come forth in the field but the trees of the winter season become withered and these are the names of the leaders which are under them Barakyal, Zalapsal, and another who is added ahead of a thousand called Heluyasap, and the days of the dominion of this are at an end. Verse 18, the next leader after him is Halamalak, whom one names the shining sun, and all the days of his light are ninety-one days, and these are the signs of days on the earth glowing heat and dryness and the trees ripen their fruits and produce all their fruits ripe and ready and the sheep pair and become pregnant and all the fruits of the earth are gathered in and all that is in the fields and the wine press these take place in the days of his dominion these are the names and the orders and the leaders of those heads of thousands gadalia kaal and hayal and the name of the head of a thousand which is added to them asapal and the days of his dominion are at an end. As Enoch explains to his son Mathushalak and to the generations following him, he's talking about how Yahuwah Yahusha appoints different messengers to be in charge of the different seasons while also talking about the calendar systems, calendrical systems, geography, and the luminaries and how they work and how they move and who is exactly in charge of them. The fourth part of Enoch is called the Book of Dream Visions, which is described in chapters 83 through 90. This has to do with two different visions that are split up. The first one involves the vision of sky falling and cataclysmic disasters as a result. And then the second one is an animal parable that's an allegory where humans represent animals and messengers are humans. And it describes and foreshadows Adam all the way up until judgment. Now what's interesting about the animal apocalypse allegory, and we're going to be going over some of that parable in just a moment to come, what's very interesting and suspicious indeed about it is that in it, it talks about the world and scriptural characters, how they're seen as animals, with Yashara as a nation representing the sheep, with other nations representing the devouring wolves, and other animals such as wild boars, bears, dogs, tigers, hyenas, ravens, kites, foxes, you name it, but it also represents Yahusha the Messiah representing the shepherd and much more and also contains visions of animals that even talk about the flood and foreshadow all the way up until the final judgment with the Messiah himself also foreshadows. Such a parable and vision that involves animals also confirms what scripture talks about in its parables describing Yashara as sheep and Yahuwah Yahusha as the shepherd in Ezekiel chapter 34 and Yahukanan John chapter 10 and that's why Yahusha also says that he comes but for the lost sheep of Yashara in Mathoth Yahuwah Matthew chapter 15 verses 24. And now we'll be going over some of the dream vision, which contains a vision of the history of Yasharal as a nation, all the way down what many have interpreted as the Maccabean revolt, but even up until the time of judgment too in chapter 90, but we'll be specifically looking at chapter 89. And you can see a summary here of the content at Wikipedia. And in chapter 89, we'll be going over all of it. The first nine verses talk about the deluge and the deliverance of Noah. Verses 10 through 27 talk about from the death of Noah to the Exodus. Chat verses 28 through 40 talk about Yasharal in the desert, the giving of the law, and the entrance into the land of Canaan. Verses 41 through 50 talk about from the time of the judges all the way to the building of the temple. Verses 51 through 67 talk about the two kingdoms that were split all the way to the destruction of Jerusalem up until the time of Babylonian captivity. Verses 68 through 71 will discuss the first period of the angelic rulers from the destruction of Jerusalem to the return from captivity. And then lastly, it will talk about the second period from the time of Cyrus to that of Alexander the Great and also during the time of Ezra and Nehemiah. Enoch chapter 89 
And one of those four went to the white bull and instructed him in a secret without being terrified. He was born a bull and became a man and built for himself a great vessel and dwelt upon it. And three bulls dwelt with him in the vessel and they were covered in. And again I raised my eyes towards the Shamayam or heavens above and saw a high roof with seven water torrents upon them and those torrents flowed with much water into an enclosure. And I saw again and see fountains were open on the surface of the great enclosure and the water began to swell and rise upon the surface and I saw the enclosure till all its surface was covered with water. And the water, the darkness and mist increased upon it. And as I looked at the height of the water, the water had risen above the height of the enclosure and was streaming over the enclosure and it stood upon the earth. And all the cattle of the enclosure were gathered together until I saw how they sank and were swallowed up and perished in the water. But the vessel floated on the water while all the oxen and elephants and camels and donkeys sank to the bottom with all the animals so that I could no longer see them and they were not able to escape, perished and sunk to the depths. And again I saw in the vision till those water torrents were removed from the high roof, and the chasms of the earth were leveled up, and other abysses were opened. Then the water began to run down into these till the earth became visible, but the vessel rested on the earth, and the darkness withdrew and light appeared. But the white bull which had become a man came out of the vessel, and the three bulls with him. And one of those three was white like the bull, and one of them was red as blood, and one black, and the white bull departed from them. Verse 10, And they began to bring forth beasts of the field and birds, so that there arose different kinds, lions, tigers, wolves, dogs, hyenas, wild boars, foxes, squirrels, pigs, hawks, vultures, hawks, eagles, and ravens, and among them was born a white bull, and they began to bite one another. But that white bull which was born amongst them brought forth a wild donkey and a white bull with it, and the wild donkeys multiplied. But the bull which was born from him brought forth a black wild boar and a white sheep, and the former brought forth many boars, but the sheep brought forth twelve sheep. Twelve sheep had grown, they gave up one of them to the donkeys, and those donkeys again gave up that sheep to the wolves, and the sheep grew up among the wolves. And the sovereign brought the eleven sheep to live with it and to pasture with it among the wolves, and they multiplied and became many flocks of sheep. Verse 15 And the wolves began to terror them, and they oppressed them, until they cried aloud on account of their little ones, and to complain unto their sovereign. And a sheep which had been saved from the wolves fled and escaped to the wild donkeys. And I saw the sheep how they lamented and cried and pleaded their sovereign with all their might till that sovereign of the sheep descended at the voice of the sheep from a high abode and came to them and pastured them. And he called the sheep which had escaped the wolves and spoke with it concerning the wolves that it should not warn them not to touch the sheep. And the sheep went to the wolves according to the word of the sovereign, and another sheep met it and went with it. And the two went and entered together into the assembly of those wolves, and spoke with them and warned them not to touch the sheep from here on. And after that I saw the wolves, and how they oppressed the sheep exceedingly with all their power, and the sheep cried aloud. Verse 20 and the sovereign came to the sheep, and they began to smite those wolves, and the wolves began to make lamentation. But the sheep became quiet, and immediately ceased to cry out. And I saw the sheep till they departed from among the wolves, but the eyes of the wolves were blinded, and the wolves departed in pursuit of the sheep with all their might. And the sovereign of the sheep went with them as their leader, and all his sheep followed him, and his face was dazzling and magnificent and awesome to look upon. But the wolves began to pursue the sheep till they reached the sea of water. Verse 24, And the sea was divided, and the water stood on this side and on that before their face. And the sovereign led them and placed himself between them and the wolves. And the wolves did not yet see the sheep. They proceeded into the midst of the sea, and the wolves followed the sheep 
and the wolves ran after them into the sea. And when they saw the sovereign of the sheep, they turned to flee before his face, but the sea gathered itself together and became as it had been created, and the water swelled and rose till it covered the wolves. And I saw till all the wolves who pursued the sheep perished and were drowned. Verse 28 But the sheep escaped from the water and went forth into a wilderness where there was no water and no grass, and they began to open their eyes and to see. And I saw the sovereign of the sheep pasturing them and giving them water and grass, and that sheep going and leading them. And that sheep ascended to the summit of that high rock, and the sovereign of the sheep sent it to them. And after that I saw the sovereign of the sheep who stood before them, and his appearance was great and awesome and majestic, and all the sheep saw him and were afraid before his face. And they all feared and trembled because of him. And they cried to that sheep with them which was amongst them, We are not able to stand before our sovereign or to look upon him. And that sheep which led them again ascended to the summit of the rock, but the sheep began to be blinded and to wander from the way which he had shown them, but that sheep was not thereof. And the sovereign of the sheep was wrathful exceedingly against them, and that sheep discovered it, and went down from the summit of the rock, and came to the sheep, and found the greatest part of them blinded and fallen away. And when they saw it, they feared and trembled at its presence, and desired to return to their folds. And that sheep took other sheep with it, and came to those sheep which had fallen away, and began to slay them. And the sheep feared its presence, and thus that sheep brought back those sheep that had fallen away, and they returned to their folds. And I saw in this vision till that sheep became a man and built a house for the sovereign of the sheep and placed all the sheep in the house. And I saw till this sheep which had met that sheep which led them fell asleep. And I saw till all the great sheep perished and little ones arose in their place and they came to a pasture and approached a stream of water. Then that sheep, their leader which had become a man, withdrew from them and fell asleep, and all the sheep sought it and cried over it with the great crying. And I saw till they ceased crying for that sheep and crossed the stream of water, and there arose the two sheep as leaders in the place of those which had led them and fallen asleep. And I saw till the sheep came to a pleasant place, and a pleasant and magnificent land. And I saw till those sheep were content, and the house stood amongst them in the pleasant land. Verse 41, And sometimes their eyes were open, and sometimes blinded, till another sheep arose and led them and brought them all back, and their eyes were open. And the dogs and the foxes and the wild boars began to devour those sheep till their sovereign of the sheep raised up another sheep, a ram from their midst, which led them. And the ram began to butt on either side of those dogs, foxes, and wild boars, till he had destroyed them all. Verse 44, and that sheep whose eyes were open saw the ram, which was amongst the sheep, till it forsook its esteem, and began to butt those sheep, and trampled upon them, and behaved itself in decency. And the sovereign of the sheep sent the lamb to another lamb, and raised it to being a ram and leader of the sheep, instead of that ram which had forsaken its esteem. And it went to it, and spoke to it, alone, and raised it to being a ram, and made it the prince and leader of the sheep, but during all these those dogs oppressed the sheep. And the first ram pursued the second ram, and the second ram arose and fled before it, and I saw till the dogs pulled down the first ram, and the second ram arose and led the little sheep. Verse 49, And those sheep grew and multiplied, but all the dogs and foxes and wild boars feared and fled before it, and the ram butted and killed the wild beasts, and those wild beasts and no longer any power among the sheep, and robbed them no more. And the ram brought forth many sheep and fell asleep. And the little sheep became a ram in its place, and became prince and leader of those sheep. Verse 50, And the house became great and broad, and it was built for those sheep. A tower high and great was built on the house for the sovereign of the sheep. And the house was low, but the tower was elevated and high. And the sovereign of the sheep stood on the tower, and they offered a full table before him. Verse 51, 
And again I saw the sheep that they again strayed and went many ways and forsook that their house. And the sovereign of the sheep called some from amongst the sheep and sent them to the sheep, but the sheep began to slay them. And one of them was saved and was not slain, and it sped away and cried aloud over the sheep, and they sought to slay it, but the sovereign of the sheep saved it from the sheep, and brought it up to me, and caused it to dwell there. And many other sheep he sent to those sheep to testify unto them and lament over them. And after that I saw that when they forsook the house of the sovereign and his tower, they fell away entirely, and their eyes were blinded. And I saw the sovereign of the sheep, how he wrought much slaughter amongst them in their herds until those sheep invited that slaughter and betrayed his place. And he gave them over into the hands of the lions and tigers and wolves and hyenas and into the hand of the foxes and to all the wild beasts and those wild beasts began to tear in pieces those sheep. And I saw that he forsook their house and their tower and gave them all into the hand of the lions to tear and devour them into the hand of all the wild beasts. And I began to cry aloud with all my might and to appeal to the sovereign of the sheep and to represent to him in regard to the sheep that they were devoured by all the wild beasts. But he remained unmoved, though he saw it and rejoiced that they were devoured and swallowed and robbed and left them to be devoured in the hand of all the beasts. And he called seventy shepherds and cast those sheep to them that they might pasture them. And he spoke to the shepherds and their companions, let each individual of you pasture the sheep hereon, and all that I shall command you that do, and I will deliver them over to you duly numbered, and tell you which of them are to be destroyed, and them you destroy. And he gave order to them those sheep, and he called another and spoke to him, Observe and mark all that the shepherds will do for the sheep, for they will destroy more of them than I have commanded them, and every excess in the destruction which will be wrought through the shepherds, record how many they destroy according to my command, and how many according to their own desire. Record against every individual shepherd all the destruction of the effects, and read out before me by number how many they destroy, and how many they deliver over for destruction, that I may have this as a testimony against them, and know every deed of the shepherds, that I may know and see what they do, whether or not they live by my command which I have commanded them. But they shall not know it, and you shall not declare it to them, nor admonish them, but only record against each individual all the destruction which the shepherds effect, each in his time, and lay it all before me. I saw till the shepherds pastured in their season, and they began to slay and to destroy more than they were ordered, and they delivered the sheep into the hand of the lions. And the lions and tigers ate and devoured the greater part of the sheep, and the wild boars ate along with them, and they burnt the tower and demolished the house. And I became exceedingly sorrowful over the tower, because the house of the sheep was demolished, and afterwards I was unable to see if the sheep entered the house. Verse 68, And the shepherds and their associates delivered over the sheep to all the wild beasts to devour them, and each one of them received in his time a definite number. It was written by the other in a book how many each of them destroyed of them, and each one slew and destroyed many more than was prescribed, and I began to weep and lament on account of those sheep. And thus in the vision I saw the one who wrote, how he wrote down every one that was destroyed by those shepherds day by day, and carried up and laid down and even showed the whole book to the sovereign of the sheep, all that they had done, and all that each one of them had made away with, and all that they had given over to destruction. And the book was read before the sovereign of the sheep, and he took the book from his hand, and read it, and sealed it, and laid it down. And immediately I saw how the shepherds pastured for twelve hours, and see, three of those sheep turned back and came, and entered and began to build up all that had fallen down to the house, but the wild boars tried to prevent them, but they were not able. Verse 73, And they began again to build as before, and they raised up the tower, and it was named the high tower, and they began again to place the table before the tower, and all the bread on it was polluted and not pure. And as regarding all this, the eyes of the sheep were blinded so that they did not see, and their shepherds also, and they delivered them in large numbers to their shepherds for destruction. 
And they trampled the sheep with their feet and devoured them. And the sovereign of the sheep remained unmoved till all the sheep were dispersed over the field and mingled with them, and they did not save them out of the hand of the beast. And the one who wrote the book carried it up, and showed it and read it before the sovereign of the sheep, and implored him on their account, and pleaded with him on their account as he showed him all the doings of the shepherds, and gave testimony before him against all the shepherds. And he took the actual book and laid it down beside him, and depart. Now chapter 90 specifically talks all about the period of Greece and Alexander the Great onward, all the way into the period of Rome, all the way to the period of the Messiah and his time onward to his death, burial, and resurrection, all the way up until the final captivities, the end times, and then final judgment, punishment of the wicked, and restoration of Yasharal. But why did I go over all of that with you? Because this vision is so important, because this vision details things that happens thousands and thousands and thousands of years down the line and all of these things so far have come to pass in these two chapters alone in this book alone these things have come to pass the only things that have yet to come to pass yet is judgment final judgment and the redemption of yasharal as a nation and the rebuilding of yasharal as a nation and captivity for the other nations so then the question becomes if it is in fact scripture and if it did come to pass because yes it came to pass and these allegories and visions came to pass and based on the definition of scripture itself if a prophet writes something and if it comes to pass it's definitely scripture indeed if all of the visions of enoch in fact came to pass why isn't it in scripture with the other books are they hiding something? Let's find out, because the very fifth and final part of Enoch, which is chapters 91 onward, talk about the book of the epistle of Enoch, which is written for later generations to distinguish the reward for the righteous and all of the punishments for the wicked. But there's also definitely something else worth noting towards the end of the book of Enoch. They also describe Noah's birth and Noah as having white skin resembling to that of the fallen ones. And this is according to the text itself, not according to me. This comes from the fragment of the book of Noah. Enoch chapter 106 verses 1 through 7. And after some days, my son Mathushalak took a wife for his son Lamach, and she became pregnant by him and bore a son. And his body was white as snow, and red as the blooming of a rose, and the hair of his head and his long locks were white as wool, and his eyes pleasant. And when he opened his eyes, he lit up the whole house like the sun, and the whole house was very bright. And after that, he rose in the hands of the midwife, and opened his mouth, and conversed with Yahua of righteousness. And his father Lamach was very afraid of him and fled, and came to his father Mathushalak. And he said unto him, I have begotten a strange son, different from an unlike man, and resembling the sons of the Alua of the Shamayam or heaven. And his nature is different, and he is not like us. And his eyes are as the rays of the sun, and his face is magnificent. And it seems to me that he is not brought forth from me, but from the messengers. And I fear that in his days a wonder may be wrought on the earth. And now, my father, I am here to petition you and implore you that you may go to Hanak our father and learn from him the truth, for his dwelling place is amongst the messengers." What's the truth when it comes to all of this? That yes, history has been whitewashed and you even see it in the book of Enoch. That's another reason that they had to hide this book because they don't want you to know that all of the people in scripture were in fact black indeed. All of the prophets of old and all of the people in scripture were dark skinned, so called black, including Enoch, including Methuselah, including Lamach, including Adam, all the way down until the Mashiach and the people during his time, too. But it was only until they became whitewashed that they all of a sudden became white. Oh, what wonders a paintbrush will do indeed, based on the synagogues of Satan who go around and say that they're the chosen, even though they're not, and there's scripture to prove this too. 
And just as we read in the book of Enoch, Noah was in fact albino and he gave birth to black children and all of his children were in fact black because they were all black back then. And I've gone over plenty of scripture with this to prove that yes, the people of scripture were in fact black with the exception of giants and the fallen ones. And that's another reason that this book was hidden in order to whitewash history. So in conclusion, we see exactly how much truth is in this book and we've just gone over the book from front to back basically and summarized the major parts of it, but we see that not only did they try to hide this book in order to whitewash history and push their agenda of a fake fraudulent nation, they also don't want people to know this stuff because they wanted to hide and try to keep hidden the fallen ones and all of their nefarious actions and how they're here too and the existence of giants in the Nephilim. And also how the fallen ones tampered with creation and created disgusting creatures such as dinosaurs and many different lizards that you've seen all throughout history that they try to say is millions and millions of years old but really was the actual result of the fallen ones and they're mingling the seeds with animals too because it wasn't just with the women it was also the animals and they're doing the exact same thing even as we speak preparing for their new world order because they already have the giants and they have the dinosaurs and other disgusting creatures ready to go. That's why you've been seeing this stuff subliminally in movies like Jurassic Park and many other ones and even ones like the BFG, the Big Friendly Giant. Not to mention how your government, your so-called royal families, your so-called elite, and your so-called celebrities have been teaming up and working with these fallen ones and these demons for well over 70 years now, along with the synagogues of Satan, the Zionists themselves, and a plan for massive world control have even been involved with organizations such as Freemasonry and the Illuminati and hired Illuminati Freemasonic pseudoscientists and also those of NASA to spread their lies because NASA means lie. And they had to keep this book hidden for the fallen ones in order to conspire their plans and cover up the secrets and cover up the truth of the flat earth just as Enoch exposes. But they also had to cover up Antarctica and also condition the world into believing planets that actually do not exist. In order to push the Hollywood agenda of the alien deception and the alien propaganda because the fallen ones are going to disguise themselves as aliens and they're pushing the NASA planets lie so that the world can buy their false messiah and project blue beam agenda once the new world order gets here once the satanic new world agenda gets here but the question is will you be fooled or will you see the truth that's right in front of you all getting ready for the deceptions and the delusions that are even at the door but now that we're awakened to truth now we know better than that there are a myriad of reasons why the book of Enoch was covered up and hidden for all of these years up until now. But now because we know the truth and the truth will make us free, we also see that Enoch also foreshadows and talks about the redemption of Yasharal to come and the defeat of our enemies. And when we continue to seek Yahuwah and his true son Yahusha and put all of our trust in Yahuwah Yahusha, we can continue to look up, for we know that our redemption draweth nigh. This is Truth Unveiled here, saying as always, Shalom.